This video contains unsettling content, violent content, jump scares and sudden loud noises. It is also not suitable for viewers who suffer from thalassophobia, baleophobia, and claustrophobia. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> The deep blue leaves many of us so vulnerable, compared to the relative safety a dry land. Not to mention that the sea has many disturbing creatures that are right at home in the water. Exploring underwater leaves us at the mercy of these undersea monsters and our need for air. This list will only feature games where the player is submerged in the ocean and not in an underwater building. So suit up and breathe deep as we dive into the top 15 horror aquatic games. They breathe. The land has become flooded. The sea has overcome the surface. As a lone frog, your quest is to dive down and save your friends, and perhaps discover the source of strange noises in the deep depths. As you explore deeper, you need to catch air bubbles to stay alive, and push struggling frogs into them so they can have the strength to return to the surface. You're not safe though. Bizarre jellyfish swim around seeking frogs to capture and drag down, merging with them to form disturbing hybrids What's more disturbing is that the enemies are in fact frogs shaped together to form horrible amalgamations. Your only defense is agility to avoid the jellyfish. You truly are vulnerable and exposed. Only your quick wits and swift swimming can keep you alive while you avoid the enemies and maintain your air supply. Will you risk yourself and your air supply to save your friends? Or will you preserve yourself and leave them to their fate? Perhaps you will reach the bottom and discover the truth behind the jellyfish menace and where these random air bubbles keep emerging from. Perhaps you're better off not knowing where all these frogs have been dragged off to. You run the risk of joining them in their horrifying fate. Barotrauma. Barotrauma plunges players into the terrifying depths of the ocean moon Europa, where survival is on a knife's edge. As the commander of a submarine navigating dangerous waters, your most important job is to protect your crew in the unforgiving depths. On a narrow ship, Every creak of the hull and every flicker of lights reminds us of the dangers lurking just beyond the portholes. As darkness covers the abyss, the only consolation is the faint glow of the submarine's lights and the brave diver's flashlights. But danger is never far away. Sonar signals echo through the silent depths, simultaneously revealing the presence of hidden monsters and bringing them close to your fragile ship. From the agile mud raptors to the powerful behemoths known as tiger threshers, each creature poses a serious threat to your survival. To face these horrors, you must rely on your wits and an arsenal of weapons. Submarine-mounted turrets provide some form of defense, while personal firearms provide the last line of defense when the beasts breach the hull. But even the strongest defenses can collapse under the relentless onslaught of the monsters of the deep. Damage to the hull must be repaired quickly to avoid catastrophic flooding and prevent your ship from succumbing to the crushing pressure of the abyss. When illness or injury strikes your crew, you must help them through the chaos and pray that they survive another day. Exploring beyond the safety of a submarine is a dangerous undertaking and requires diving suits that offer little protection from the horrors that await us. With every step into the abyss, the darkness threatens to swallow you up and reminds you of the fragility of life in this hostile environment. 
in Barrow Trauma, the sense of foreboding is palpable as one grapples with the ever-present fear of the unknown. The depths of the ocean moon Europa are a sea of countless dangers where survival is a constant battle against the approaching darkness. Iron Lung Iron Lung immerses players in a chilling horror experience as they take on the role of an unnamed convict tasked with exploring the blood-covered moon AT5 in the small submersible lesson 13. Developed by David Shemitsky, the game unfolds in a post-apocalyptic world with stars and habitable planets vanished in an event known as the Quiet Rapture. With resources scarce, players must navigate the treacherous depths of AT5 to find vital supplies for human survival. However, the Iron Lung, with its sealed doors and metal-covered window ports, is ill-equipped for the eerie and dangerous environment. Using buttons and a navigational chart, players guide the submarine through the ominous waters, capturing images of key areas to aid their search. As they delve deeper, they must contend with the unsettling presence of unknown creatures lurking just beyond the vessel's hull, adding to the tension and terror of the exploration. Will players brave the horrors of AT-5 and secure their freedom, or succumb to the darkness that awaits in the blood ocean's depths? Remnants Aurelia Remnants Aurelia is the newest game at Dark Tree Game Studio. While only a demo, it's a horrifying experience. You play as Jason, a deep sea diver who awakens one night by the sounds of terror and bubbling chants. After climbing on deck, you witness a group of fish skin creatures sacrificing your crewmates to the sea, some hellish ritual. A tiny grotesque and slimy flesh emerges from the darkness. Having no way to escape, you don your diving gear and head for the sea floor, hoping that whatever lies in those murky depths is safer than the abominations above. You plummet for leagues until you're swallowed by a sunken cavern. Your only path of escape is blocked by a monolithic ancient structure depicting some long forgotten sea god. Wandering through caves covered in bloody lesions and pustules of flesh, you'll encounter beings that were never meant to exist, creatures of the deep long since corrupted by the eldritch power that festers through this place. Even if you manage to kill them, the sounds of infernal machinery and movements will drown endlessly in your mind, leaving you shuddering and squirming through these undersea caverns. If you should escape the confines of this trench, pray that nothing more awaits you than the infinite deaths of the abyss. Siren Rex Maria. This entry, though mild in comparison to others on this list, blends a mix of psychological horror with puzzle gaming. It focuses on a French diver exploring a shipwreck from the 40s that was carrying something on board. The logs indicate there was a containment breach, but what it was is left unknown. As you explore, the player will soon see remnants of a cryptid entity, a mermaid from the looks of things, that is anything but friendly. The game is a mild horror experience, with the ambient music being the cornerstone to setting the tone. There are quick time events for puzzle solving, and the pacing gives you the feeling that the calm is truly before the storm. The major note that sends a chill down your spine as you play is the underwater screams that the siren makes. Take the dive and see what you can uncover before the siren sings you 
to your watery grave. Debris. You take the role of a freelance videographer tasked with filming a collection of meteorite debris that landed in the Arctic Ocean, swimming underwater near glaciers, with two other divers who make you believe you're safe. By getting separated in the dark will cause you to second guess your sense of security. An artificial intelligence drone called Sonia accompanies you as a companion through these gloomy waters. But things are never as they seem. The marine life are almost alien in appearance, glowing in strange bioluminescence colors. Armed with a flare gun, you'll have to succeed in fending off sharks and other vicious creatures of the deep. While you have a limited supply of energy, as flares are tight to the energy meter, you can charge the suit up through Sonya and give more time for exploring. In many ways, debris has been closely compared with Somnautica, featuring amazing graphics and creepy moments. However, what makes this game unique is that the game's story will branch depending on what route the player takes, leading to multiple different endings. Do you make it to the surface safely? Or are there more secrets and down there? The Benz. The Benz is a PS1 style horror game that derives its name from the affliction felt by divers who resurface too quickly without allowing their bodies to adapt to pressure. You take the role of a deep sea diver doing a routine walk along the sea floor, albeit with some outdated equipment. After stepping off the deep sea lift, your operator informs you that it's gotten stuck, preventing you from surfacing. The only thing connecting you with the world above is a thin cord attached to your ship, supplying you with the precious life-giving oxygen. Remnants of crashed planes and collapsed oil rigs are scattered throughout the depths, showing that nothing can escape the grasp of a raging sea. Suddenly, after a frantic call from your operator, sounds of explosions echo through the water, and you feel the steady supply of oxygen flowing into your suit begin to falter. Now in a race against time, you must push yourself against the otherworldly pull of the tide and hope you don't fall victim to any misfortune along the way as you descend deeper into the suffocating abyss. Madness seems to take hold as you find structures that shouldn't exist, obelisks that pulse and glow with some hidden infernal power. Even as you start climbing upwards, hoping to see shafts of light piercing through the rippling waves above, you are only met with more oppressive darkness. As you play more of the game, you're left wondering if you're really seeing the remnants of some ancient undersea civilization or if it's all just a hallucination created by the late stage effects of the bends. Death in the Water Want to play a game based purely on survival, with no way out, and the threat grows the longer you play? Then Death in the Water is for you. This game has the player in the ocean, facing off against sharks. There is no healing from a shark attack, but you are armed with a harpoon gun and unlimited ammo. Death in the Water boasts the best looking graphics in this list to help immerse you into the game. There's not really much of a story other than you volunteer to investigate Blackwater Bay, a mysterious hotspot for disappearances and rumors. The difficulty is explored as more sharks start to appear. Your vision in the distance is blurry, hiding how many could be coming. Movement for the player is sluggish, while the sharks are stealthy and fast, mirroring how it would be in a real-life scenario. You score points for every shark kill, and it's the main way a player can feel any glint of a goal while surviving the endless onslaught. It's a simple concept where you can't truly win, but you just hope to last as long as you can. Death in the Water may be short, but players will always remember what it's like to be the hunted, and not the hunter, in this endless underwater nightmare. Silt Seeing your character 
doctor in a diver suit chained underwater would already leave you to question what is going on. But seeing them wake up and possess a piranha gives you a taste of what you experience in the game. As you navigate through the dark waters, you have to make sure to possess creatures from a short distance just so they don't attack you. You'll need to explore four different areas and complete puzzles that tell you about a prophecy that must be fulfilled. Each area has a giant beast serving as its final challenge, and the themes of horror and isolation blends perfectly well in cranking up the thalassophobia. Often compared to an underwater limbo, Silt's monochrome hand-drawn art style sticks with you long after you finish playing. Out of what is to transpire, are you able to use your wits to figure out the puzzles in the dark? To complete the prophecy and perhaps set your fallen brethren free? Subnautica Having to abandon a spaceship that's falling planet side is already a heart-pounding ordeal. But diving into the ocean waters of planet 4546b will not mentally prepare you for what you will experience. Emerging from the pod and seeing the aurora in the water on the verge of exploding, you are left with few options. Even though you don't know what kind of creatures are in the sea, diving in and finding items helps with survival. It seems safe in the beginning, especially just being several meters below the surface. However, when you traverse closer to the ocean's floor, your paranoia starts setting in. Hearing distant roaring in the darkness is truly a nightmare waiting to happen, especially if you're not checking your surroundings. Finding the other life pods is going to be the last thing on your mind, because there are gigantic monstrosities that will make you wish you never went down into the depths. The roaring in the distance belongs to the Reaper Leviathan, which lives up to its name when you see it up close. From a juvenile to an adult, the ghost leviathan will greet you with a nerve-frying screech as it charges without hesitation. A 300-ton force coming out of nowhere belongs to the sea dragon leviathan, who can tear a 54-meter submarine to shreds. Imagine what it could do to a human with little to no defenses like you. With these beasts under the ocean, do you think you have nerves of steel as you traverse the deep waters of 4546B? Depth. Depth is a player versus player experience of divers versus sharks. Divers hunt for treasure while placing their resources inside Steve, submersible treasure extraction vehicle. Sharks hunt for the divers or destroy Steve. Like in the real world, sharks are peerless predators of the deep, so they have a natural advantage over the soft, squishy divers. Having a hammerhead blaze towards you, jaws open, is a sight that will terrify even the most seasoned of gamers. The lack of ambient music adds to the tension and paranoia while seeking for treasure, knowing that a shark could snap you up at any moment from any direction. Divers have tools and weapons to defend themselves to gain a tactical edge, but face to face your only defense is mashing buttons to stab the hell out of the shark chomping on you. You really feel like you're inches away from the jaws of defeat with every breath you take. Shark players have a variety of species with their own strengths and abilities, but have a natural speed advantage in the water and when up close to their prey. The real horror comes from being a vulnerable diver, surrounded by sharks, not knowing when they will charge and strike. Is the pursuit of treasure really worth risking becoming chum for local marine life? Swallow the Sea Swallow the Sea is a game where you play as a lowly egg cell trying to survive in a hostile underwater environment. It gives the player a feeling of vulnerability in a short game that tells you very little. The way to progress and survive is by eating smaller creatures in the hopes of birthing, or even thriving. 
As you eat and grow, you'll become a fully formed orange creature. You'll need to avoid creatures that look like pufferfish, spikes, and eels whose face peel back revealing a skull. But nothing compares to the biggest threat in the water. The apex predator known only as Oro, which resembles the form of a purple sea snake. Oro chases you, and unlike most of the others, it's the hardest to dodge. The echoing sounds of it chomping, the ambient tones that play can be pure nightmare fuel when you can't see it after a while. Oro will even eat its own tail to stave off hunger. It's still unknown what kind of creature you are in this survival of the fittest game, but no matter what, you're still left with an eerie notion of being low on a new food chain. One that you can't swim your way out of. The Trench In the trench, players step into the shoes of the captain of the Pandora sub, embarking on a harrowing journey to explore the depths of the trench and recover data from the wreckage of the Neptune. This short, horror-based gameplay experience, presented in a first-person perspective, tasks players with unraveling the mystery of Neptune's fate while navigating the treacherous marine life lurking in the abyss. Operating the Pandora sub's various functions, including its mechanical arm, proves to be a challenging endeavor due to the fiddly and difficult mechanics of the interactive touch panel. While the marine life encountered resembles traditional earth fish, the tension escalates as players face off against a menacing sea monster lurking in the deepest depths. The Pandora sub offers scant protection against the hostile creatures, leaving players vulnerable in their undersea tin can. Despite oxygen not being a concern, survival hinges on invading the relentless predators and conducting light maintenance to reboot subsystems when necessary. With tension mounting steadily and the occasional jump scare, the trench immerses players in a spine-chilling atmosphere that crescendos as they confront the monstrous entity awaiting them in the abyssal darkness, delivering a gripping one-and-done horror experience. Something's in the sea. Left alone in the sea with only a raft and a strange relic after a plane crash, your only goal is to listen to the relic and restore its lost parts. To achieve this, you must dive down and retrieve its parts while staying aware of your remaining air as your heart rate spikes and vision fades. The relic rewards you as you find parts, allowing you to hold your breath longer and swim faster. However, as you progress, something deep in the depths begins to stir and rumble. A red giant eye stares at you while large tentacles try to grab and pull you down. Even the life raft is not safe, as this monster can tip the boat and send you flying into its grasp. Once the relic is restored, you may use its power to defeat the enraged beast as it surfaces to confront you. The relic can revive you if you die, but don't get complacent, as it can only do this three times before you succumb to your watery grave. You have no weapons, no defenses, and limited air. All you can hear is the beat of your heart, the darkness surrounding you gradually closing in and taking shape as the monster grows more active. You are way out of your depth confronting this eldritch horror, but the relic is your only hope of avoiding a one-way trip to a monster's stomach. Narcosis 
Narcosis can best be described as a horror walking simulator where you take control of a deep sea diver after surviving an earthquake disaster at the bottom of the ocean. Weighted down by your heavy diving suit and your own fears, you must keep pushing forward to discover a way to save yourself from a watery grave. Oxygen is your only salvation, which is constantly being used up and needs refilling. While your suit will protect you, your own mind will become your worst enemy. Disturbing sights and hallucinations will lay on the pressure worse than the water's depths. The high stress causes you to breathe harder and drain oxygen quicker. Squid, anglerfish, and large spider crabs will impede your way and attack you. While your suit will protect your body, the stress on your mind will kill you before long. Your only defense is a humble knife to beat back threats or your trusty flares to distract them and illuminate the way ahead. There are no monsters, no cosmic entities, no secret evil force, only you and your own mind. While you may feel safe in your suit, it may also prove to be your coffin. Your body may be safe and dry, but inside your mind, you're drowning in a sea of your own nightmares. Thank you for watching. And on this page, thanks to our members. If you are interested in supporting us, we have three tiers. Bronze, Silver, and Gold. Each one comes with perks. We'll do our best to keep you up to date on what's going on. And special thanks to our patrons. Again, if you are interested in supporting us, the link to our Patreon is in the bottom left hand corner, down here. We also have a Discord link here, and a Kofi page. But that's enough from me. Let's see the creators of the video. Visit their social media links, if they provided you some entertainment. I'm XJ. Until next time.